Good morning and welcome to our recorded worship here at Swamp Lutheran. I want to thank you for your participation. I want to thank you also for your faithful giving to the ministries at Swamp. Your support is critical. Tonight is the night of music, 7 p.m. Sunday evening, right here in Swamp. Hope you can come and join us. Donations of cookies are appreciated for our post-music uh, reception in our social hall. I want you to take note of the upcoming events in our bulletin that you have. Uh, for instance, we have the sharing tree in the lobby is up uh, to accept your donations of hats, mittens, socks, and underwear. We begin our worship with hymn number 239, Park the Glad Sound, verses 1 and 4. of John that rejoicing in your salvation we may bring forth the fruits of repentance through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen, amen. our first reading is from Zephaniah the third chapter the prophet Zephaniah's message is mostly one of judgment for sin this reading however which comes from the conclusion of the book prophesies joy for Judah and Jerusalem Judgment has led to repentance, and God's salvation is at hand. The prophet speaks. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you, has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Our second reading from today is from Philippians, the fourth chapter. Despite being in prison, Paul is remarkably upbeat as he writes this letter. Hence, he urges his friends in Philippi to trust God with all their worries and concerns with the hope that they will experience God's joy and peace. St. Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. John the Baptist heralds the mighty one who is coming. John teaches that preparation for God's reign is not a matter of identity, 
but a bearing fruits of merciful justice, radical generosity, and vocational integrity. The Gospel speaks. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In response he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you. O Christ. Christ. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. How's that for a start of a sermon? Hellfire and brimstone, that seems to be John's preaching style. It's not exactly mine. As we see in our reading today, John has an important message of warning, exhortation, and expectation to share in our text today. He comes out swinging in his warning statements. It seems John is comparing those who come out into the wilderness to be baptized by him to snakes scurrying before a fire. And then after insulting them, he tells them to bear fruits worthy of repentance. Now remember last week when John was proclaiming a baptism of repentance? I shared that repentance was a change of heart and mind. It's a transformation that leaves clues in the way that we leave our lives. Well, today, John describes the ways that a transformed person might change their behavior. You know, to bear fruits worthy of repentance, as he puts it. And the first thing he tells them is not to rest on religious pedigree. That is, the coming judgment will not be based on religious, cultural, or ethnic identity, but rather on the conduct of one's life. For that is the window to the soul. John is suggesting that being God's chosen people is not an insurance policy, but rather a call to action. And he drives the point home by describing an unproductive fruit tree being cut down and thrown into the fire. John is pointing, is painting rather, a rather stark scene of divine judgment. And so now having heard John's rather harsh sermon, well, one might expect them to leave dejected and defeated, but they don't. Instead, they ask rather earnestly, what then should we do? Now, this is not a question one asks when things are going well, is it? No, it's the question we ask when we've come to the ends of ourselves where all our wisdom has failed, our defenses are down, and when we have been defeated by the hardships and disappointments in our lives. It's the sort of question we ask when we're disillusioned, we're weary, we're broken, we're desperate. And John's listeners must have fit this description. After all, they trudged out to the wilderness to get yelled at by John. They were desperate, and they came searching for change, for hope, it was their Advent moment, their time of waiting and preparation for the coming of the Lord that John is proclaiming at the end of today's text. Still, it's curious. I mean, here is this wild beast of a man, dressed in camel hair and fueled by locusts, 
He's yelling at them. He's calling them names. It's a litany of hard words. So it's a leap of faith to ask the question, what then should we do? I mean, just how will this John, who lives an ascetic life of denial and sacrifice, answer? What kind of radical prescription will he offer? Abandon your homes, family, and jobs? Maybe live in the desert apart from the wickedness of the world. Or start a commune and live a celibate life. Maybe even start a revolution. But as we see, John's answer is far more radical. So radical that we might miss it. John's unexpected and radical answer is, you should go home. That's right, go home to your lives, your families, your vocations, your friends, your colleagues. Stop fleeing. Stop insisting that God is far away from your daily life. Embrace the nitty gritty of your existence instead of waiting for a holy someday in some faraway place. God is with you now and is calling you to do his will. His message is simple but radical. Share, be fair, don't bully. Each prescription hits the questioner right where they live. It's the medicine they needed to hear based upon their own context. To the impoverished crowd, John answers that those with two coats share one with those who have no coat, and to share your food with somebody who is hungry. In short, he is telling the crowd that they have gifts to give. So stop hoarding, stop procrastinating, stop making excuses. To the tax collectors, he tells them to stop their excessive skimming of the poor people already burdened under heavy Roman taxation. And to the soldiers, well, he tells them not to use their power to extort money from anyone. You see, John's message is one of social responsibility. He points out the injustices and the inequities of society that his listeners participate in. And they are the bases of the desired behaviors of his listeners, each based on their respective contexts. John speaks directly to temptations inherent to each group, particularly that of grasping after more at the expense of others, which of course is a temptation that is familiar enough for us today. This radical notion of resistance to the ways of the world is what John is proposing. So in this time of Advent, as we look forward to the coming of the Messiah, are we reflecting on what we need to do to prepare? What then should we do? Is this a question you've asked recently or ever? Maybe, maybe, just maybe we are complacent, smug in our sense of chosenness as Christians, that we are offended that repentance has any place in this Christmas story. Maybe you don't feel the need to ask, what then should we do? Or maybe you're scared to ask the question, scared of what might be expected of you, but you shouldn't be. John doesn't expect you to enter a monastery or start a commune in the wilderness or anything that sacrificial. John calls his listeners and us to serve right where we are, amid, not apart from, the trouble and challenges of our lives. To do some good because of and not in spite of our compromised positions. You see, John reveals to us that we find the holy in the mundane, in our work life, our social life, in our everyday, ordinary lives. And so faithful living, well, it need not be heroic. No pilgrimage, no ambition trips to faraway lands, no monastic living or renunciation is necessary. There are simple and ample opportunities to do God's will, to be God's people all around us. And they are shaped by the roles in which we find ourselves and the needs of the neighbor with which we are confronted. Share out of an attitude of abundance. Be fair, even when you can get more. And don't bully. Avoid the temptation to misuse your power and resist participating in systems or practices that harm or hold back others. You know, we have work to do for sure. Work so ordinary and unheroic that we might miss it, even as it disappoints us. But that's the lesson. 
There is no part of our lives, no matter how mundane, that is beyond God's reign. It's all around us, and we are called to participate in bringing it to fruition, like trees bringing forth good fruit. Now, John concludes his sermon with a harrowing description of the coming Messiah, who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire, winnowing fork in his hand to separate the wheat from the chaff, storing the wheat and burning the chaff. Now, on the surface, it's a troubling scene of judgment, sorting and burning. But if we dig a little deeper, we might see this as Jesus judging us in perceptive love. One who sees in us rich harvest still hidden in chaff, separating the all that's destructive from all that is beautiful, good, and worthy. So embrace Jesus winnowing fork that recognizes your life for the golden field that it is, ripe for sacred fire. A fire that just might hurt, but the one who wields the flame, well, he is trustworthy. He knows you, sees you, <coughs> loves you, and he will gather you like precious grain into his arms with joy. And that, my friends, is the good news in Christ Jesus for us today. And so now may the peace that surpasses all our understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, renew your church and raise up leaders who announce your good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide the work of candidacy and call committees. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day. We lift up to you those on our prayer list and all those we name before you now, either aloud in our lips or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Rejoicing God, you exalt over us in singing. Enliven the song of this assembly and bless the ministry of church musicians, especially our gifted musicians and singers who will perform this evening at the Night of Music. With instruments and dance, join our voices to the song of all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Guiding God, pilot this congregation today as it conducts its business meeting. Help it to embrace the mission you have for it to be your church in this place at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. We give you thanks for your servants who showed us your goodness and grace. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us steadfast in faith until we make our home with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will, your will be, done be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins we as we forgive those who sin against, against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. 
The God of hope fill us with joy and peace and believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus for whom we wait. Amen. Amen. And now we will conclude by singing hymn number 248, People Look East. <laughs> Thanks be to God.